evening and welcome to Truro Cathedral. Welcome to those of you present in this sacred place and to those of you joining us via the live stream. A particular and very special welcome to Bishop Philip and to Ruth for this service in which we give thanks for Bishop Philip's Episcopal leadership of the Diocese of Truro and we bless him as he and Ruth move to the Diocese of Winchester. Everything that you need for this service is contained within the order of service. The readings and hymns are all chosen by Bishop Philip. After choral evensong, there'll be tributes followed by refreshments. Please join us as we say thank you and goodbye. On your way out there also, there will be a prayer card for you to take, and we invite you to join in a great wave of prayer for God's blessing upon the diocese and for our ongoing journey of mission and witness and for the discernment process for the next Bishop of Truro. And so we offer this choral evensong to Almighty God in thankfulness for Philip, for his obedience in his calling placed upon his life and his heart, for his life of witness and service as deacon, priest, and bishop, and for his leadership of this diocese. We give thanks to God. Let's try to compete with the very angels in heaven and raise the roof of the cathedral with these tremendous hymns. Christ is made the sure foundation.
Today's psalm is Psalm 111. Please be seated whilst the choir chant the psalm. The first lesson is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, beginning at the first verse. At the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice, and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom 
and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. Here ends the first lesson.
second lesson is taken from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, beginning at the third verse. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that on the day of Christ, you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Here ends the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last.
choir sing the anthem, Do Not Be Afraid, which is composed by Philip Stopford. The words come from chapter 43 of the prophecy of Isaiah.
May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Choir, I do just want to begin by thank you for singing that so uh, very beautifully. Some of you might remember that you sang it over me. I knelt on that spot there at my service of, uh, of welcome here, and you sang it over me. And it was uh, a beautiful, beautiful, uh, reassuring uh, experience. So it's wonderful to end with that. What you, you may not know, my dear late father became, I would say, Truro Cathedral Choir's biggest fan uh, after, my, uh, after I started my ministry here. And that, uh, that anthem was actually playing as he drew his final breaths. I don't want you to think it was fatal, um, but it was, I could think of nothing better, actually, to pass into glory than he hearing Truro Cathedral Choir singing that beautiful, beautiful anthem. Now, I don't want to push this analogy too far, but let's think for a moment about the background to our New Testament reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. The essential background for understanding this passage is this. God called someone, specifically the Apostle Paul, to cross a very significant stretch of water, specifically the Aegean Sea from Asia to Europe, to go to a place, specifically the city of Philippi, where he could reasonably claim to have heritage because it was a Roman colony and he was a Roman citizen. As I say, I don't want to push the an analogy too far, but I too heard the call of God to come to Truro. I can remember the exact moment when something seemed to jump inside me as I heard that Bishop Tim was to move on. And that sense of call was confirmed in so many ways subsequently, not least through the process of appointment itself. I too crossed a significant piece of water in crossing the Tamar, a river which is of much greater cultural than it is of physical significance. And I too came to a place where I have heritage, a heritage of which I will always be proud in my Cornish ancestry. Of course, there are some differences between Paul's experience in Philippi and mine in this diocese. Paul and his companion Silas caused a riot, were flogged and flung into prison from which they miraculously escaped. None of that has been my experience in the diocese of Truro, at least not so far. But like Paul, I have not been called to stay put as he moved on to Thessalonica, so Ruth and I have been called on to Winchester, which brings us, of course, to this service today. There is actually one other parallel, barely worth mentioning, but in a perhaps unconscious nod towards St. Paul's epistle to the Philippians, my parents actually named me Philip Ian. And of all these parables, uh, and, but all of these parable, uh, parallels, inexact though they may be, suggest to me that Paul's words to the Philippians in our second reading do provide at least something of a platform on which I can some base some words as I bid farewell on behalf of us both to you all today. Now, the words of this epistle were written many years after Paul had left the Philippians, and yet they are marked by a real sense of affection and love for them. I thank my God every time I remember you, praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. For God is my witness how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And I have no doubt that in years to come, I likewise will look back on you all in this diocese with no less affection. It has been such a joy to get to know so many of you, to have shared so much with you, and to have shared in the ministry of the good news of Jesus with you. More specifically, Paul does two very simple things in this passage. Specifically, he looks back with thanks and he looks forward with hope. He gives thanks to God for their sharing in the gospel from the first day until now, and he looks forward in hope. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. 
And that dynamic is found too in our Old Testament reading. In the wilderness, God speaks to Moses and reminds him of his rescue of the people of Israel, a rescue for which, of course, they should be thankful. I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. And then he points them forward in hope. If you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. And today, too, I want to look back with thankfulness and look forward with hope. More specifically, I want to look back thankful for all that our God has done amongst us. And I want to look forward in hope to all that he will continue to do amongst you as you continue to follow him, obey him, and trust him. And as I look back with thanks for what has been the best part of five years here amongst you, I cannot, of course, ignore the pandemic, which, sit, which hit some 18 months after we arrived. Of course, there was controversy over the closing of churches, but what I remember with such gratitude was the way that our churches and Cornwall more generally rose to the challenge of the pandemic. There were myriad demonstrations of people going the extra mile, going above and beyond what they might have been expected to do in loving their neighbors as themselves, in collecting prescriptions, in checking in on their neighbors, in getting their shopping, in running the food banks, and in innumerable other ways. All of that I found deeply impressive and moving, and for all that you did to make that possible, I am deeply grateful. But there is much more for which I'm thankful to. It wasn't just what you did during what was a crisis that I find so impressive. It's what you do during more normal times, if in these times normal times actually exist. It's that that impresses me so much. The sheer business of running a parish church is very demanding. Being warden or treasurer or safeguarding officer or PCC member is not a sinecure, far from it. Such roles require real dedication and commitment and love, and that you show in abundance, and I am so grateful for it. But such dedication, commitment, and love manifests itself in many other ways too. One of the standout periods of my time here was the visit of the Archbishop of Canterbury last year. And what impressed me so much, and for which I am so thankful, was the opportunity to visit so many different projects and groups with him, serving people on the margins of society, and doing so with so much love. And what impressed me was that these were not events put on specially for Archbishop Justin's visit. This was a privileged glimpse into things that were happening anyway. And it wasn't just that weekend either. It's wonderful to visit churches Sunday by Sunday, but no less wonderful to see all that they're doing in so many other ways on the other days of the week, to love their neighbors in the name of Jesus. And for all that, I am deeply grateful. So much of this is an expression of the ministry of the whole people of God, and I am grateful to you all but I do want to say a particular thank you to the clergy of this diocese, whether licensed or or PTO, stipendiary or otherwise, for all you do, thank you for all you do to enable the ministry of all God's people. What a wonderful lot you are. What a privilege it has been to be part of you and to lead you. I also want to say a loud thank you to our excellent church house staff for all the many, many things you do to enable and support the mission and ministry of this diocese and its churches. You too are very wonderful, and no less wonderful are the lovely people who've supported Ruth and me so caringly and so well at Lis Escob. I'm deeply grateful to you too. I also want to say a huge thank you for our church schools. What wonderful places they are. Places of loving community, vibrant worship, and intentional discipleship. And it's been a real joy to visit many of them. 
perhaps the, the standout, or certainly one of the standout moments in my time in this diocese was when I visited Archbishop Benson's school here in this uh, city. And I went round from class to class and the pupils had carefully prepared questions for me. And eventually I came to a year six class and uh, one of the girls said to me, when did you turn into a bishop? And I said, well, that's an interesting way of putting it. I suppose it was last November. And then I said, what do you think I should turn into next? And without a moment's hesitation, she said, a giraffe. <laughs> well, I have to say, it's always good to have an ambition, and that would be one up on being Bishop of Winchester. And finally, in giving thanks, I want to thank Cornwall for being itself, not only for being beautiful, though it certainly is, but for believing in and living by the spirit of one and all. It's been a huge privilege to have been a trustee of the Cornwall Community Foundation over these last years and to approve countless grant applications from a myriad of wonderful local community initiatives. It is easy to focus on our problems and they shouldn't be ignored, but Cornwall's social capital is very significant, so strong, not to be taken for granted and something for which we should all be grateful. For all these things, for all of you, I am very grateful. And more than that, I'm thankful to God for you, for all that is good that I have seen in our churches, in our schools, and in Cornwall more widely, is testimony to God's work in you and through you in this place. And for that, I truly thank him. So with hearts full of thanks, let us look forward in hope. Hope is such a precious commodity. A tiny church in a Roman colony could easily have lost hope, as could a migrant people stuck in a desert place. Hope is such a precious commodity. You may well have heard me say this before, but whilst material poverty is so damaging, poverty of aspiration is truly crippling. That's true in any community. It's true in some Cornish communities. And it's certainly true of church communities. A church without hope is indeed hopeless. But we can be, and we must be, people of hope. Paul had hope for the Philippians. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. And the Lord had abundant hope for the people of Israel in the desert. You shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. And I believe that a recovery of hope has been a hallmark of the life of this diocese over the last few years. I know that the on the way process has been a challenge, but I know too that for many it has given much longed for opportunity to pray for and imagine and build a different and a better future, one that is not marked by decline, but by fruitfulness and sustainability. And hope has indeed been a hallmark of the plans that have been drawn up, and there are many hopeful indications of those plans taking shape. And for that, I am very thankful. One hopeful sign is the number of people who are stepping forward into ministry, whether lay or ordained, as they are doing in increasing numbers. And it's been a particular privilege for me to work with many of you as you explore God's calling on your lives. You are a real sign of hope. Another sign of hope I want to highlight today is the sheer quality of the clergy we are attracting to this diocese alongside those stepping into ordination from within the diocese. And those of you who are here already, I've already said you're wonderful. And at a time when other dioceses are finding recruitment a challenge, we are finding it less so. Not easy, of course, but less of a challenge than in other places. One reason for that is that many clergy who come here tell us they really do find hope and inspiration in our diocese and vision, the saint's way. The saint's way, which of course looks back to Cornwall's distinctive past with thankfulness and on the basis of that rich heritage calls us to look forwards with, with hope, with hope above all in our God and in all that he might do amongst us. And let me just say that that diocesan vision is just that. 
It is a diocesan vision. There is no reason for it to change, therefore, when a new bishop is appointed. This cathedral, too, is a more hopeful place today. The last years have been challenging for it in many ways, and those challenges have not gone away. But I am delighted by Dean Simon's appointment and have every confidence that under his leadership, this cathedral would enter into a new, fruitful and hopeful season of mission and ministry. Of course, as a diocese, you are going into a period of change and a period of some uncertainty. But you can, I'm sure, and you should be confident and hopeful in the midst of it. One reason you can be confident is because of the sheer quality of those who, who will be leading you in this period of transition. I cannot think of anyone who could possibly lead you better in this new season than Bishop Hugh. I know that in leaving you in his care, I leave you in the very safest and most caring of hands. There will be a symbolic moment later in this service while I take, when I take my cope off and lay it on Hugh's shoulders as a sign of the mantle passing from me to him. It is only symbolic because this is my cope and I'm taking it with me. <laughs> but the symbolism is powerful, as powerful as the prayers and the love that go with it. But please be confident above all in our God. If you hear me saying nothing else today, then please hear that. Be confident in our God. I've said many times over the last few years that this process of change we have embarked on, in many ways that the, the changing world around us uh, demands of us, this change is above all a test of faith and an exercise in faith. And so it is and so it remains. So keep your trust, your faith, and your confidence in God high. Be confident in this with St. Paul, and indeed with me, that the one who began a good work amongst you will bring it to completion by the day of Christ Jesus. In the end, the Church of God does not rely on bishops. Thank God for that. Bishops come and bishops go, but the word of our God stands forever. The Church of God does not rely on bishops, woe but tighter if she ever does. The Church of God relies upon her God, or so she should. So trust him, depend upon him, have confidence in him, and he will do great things amongst you. I have confidence in God for you for the future, and I look forward very much to hearing about all that he continues to do amongst you here in this wonderful diocese because although you will be out of sight you will not be out of mind and you will not be out of my prayers as i said at the start i don't want to push the analogy between myself and saint paul too far as if but i do want to make his words to the philippians my own for you today and i want to close with his prayer for them now so with thankfulness with hope and with love, I say to you that I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work amongst you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that on the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Amen. stand to sing the hymn, Father, hear the prayer we offer, during which a collection will be taken.
Could I ask uh, the College of Canons and the clergy who are up here to come and join us here as we pray for Philip and for Ruth? Please do come and join us. This uh, rather beautiful liturgy comes from the Franciscan prayer book. Uh, I think it's the most beautiful moment, and I ask you to engage with it fully and say these words from your heart. God of our beginnings and endings, we celebrate all that we have shared with Bishop Philip and with Ruth. We ask your blessing upon them as they continue on their journey. May the love that is in our hearts be a bond that unites us forever, wherever we may be. May the power of your presence bless this moment of our leave-taking. This we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. And so together, as the Diocese of Truro, we pray. As you journey onward, we ask your forgiveness where we have failed you. We give thanks for all you have given us, and we assure you of our love and prayers. Thank you. As I leave, I ask forgiveness for where I have failed you. I give thanks for all that you have given to me, and I assure you of my love and prayers. As you experience the pain of change and the insecurity of moving on, we pray that you may also experience the blessing of inner growth. I know that God goes with me. As you meet the poor, the pained, and the stranger on the way, we pray that you may see in each one the face of Christ. I know that God goes with me. As you walk through the good times and the bad, we pray that you may never lose sight of the shelter of God's love in us. I know that God goes with me. As you ponder your decisions and wander over the fruits of your choice, we pray that the peace of Christ may reign in your heart. I know that God goes with us. We praise and thank you, God of the journey, for Philip and for Ruth, who are soon to leave us. We entrust them into your loving care, knowing that you are always our guide, our faithful traveller and companion on the way of Christ. Shelter and protect them from all harm and anxiety. Grant them the courage to meet their future and the grace to go into their new life through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Philip, I anoint you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Know that you go always in their presence, every step of your way. Amen. Philip, Ruth, Go in peace, for our God goes with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.
you, our master said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and so I pass my mantle to you. May you minister surrounded by love, prayer, and the guiding presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and unchanging God, creator of an ever-shifting and changing world, bless us with a heavenly curiosity that seeks you and your ways in everything we do. And grant us your wisdom that we might continue to walk your way together in faith, in hope, and in love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. may be the last time I do so in this language. An aloth regas benico hagas guitho, an aloth graes di fas plana warno habas gracias du, an aloth redra hefo inep warno ha ridu cres, ha benath du algalasic, and tas, and mab, and spirit sans rebo in tretho, ha triga genau benitha. Amen. So we sing our final hymn, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. <laughs> 